Section 30 of The Convivio. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Algie Pug. The Convivio by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Philip H. Wicksteed. Ode 13. Text to the projected 14th Treatise. Tre donne intorno al cor mi son venute. Three ladies have gathered round my heart, and seat themselves without, for within sits love, who holds scenery over my life. So beauteous are they, and of such power, that the mighty liege, I mean him who is in my heart, can scarce man himself to speak of them. Each one seems greedy and dismayed, as one cast out and weary, from whom all folk have fallen, and whom nor beauty avails, nor wit. Time was wherein, according to their speech, they were beloved. Now they are held in wrath and in neglect by all. These, so lonely, have come as to the house of a friend, for they know verily that within is he of whom I speak. Much doth the one of them grieve in her words, and on her hand supports her, like a clipped rose. Her naked arm, column of grief, feels the ray falling from her face. The other hand conceals her tear-drenched locks, ungirt, unsandaled, and only in herself seeming a lady. When first love through her tattered gown saw her, where it were comely not to say, he, in pity and in wrath, of her and of her grief made question. O oh, food of few, answered a voice, mingled with sighs, our nature sends us here to thee. I, who am saddest, am sister to thy mother, and am righteousness, whore, as thou seest by my weeds and cincture. When she had revealed her, and made known, grief and shame laid hold upon my lord, and he demanded who were the other two with her and she, who was so eager in her tears, soon as she understood him, was kindled into hotter grief, saying, Now, on my eye's behalf, hast thou not Ruth? Then she began, As thou shouldst know, from its source springs the Nile, a slender stream, there, where the great light is shielded from the earth by the rush spikes, over the virgin wave did I bring forth her at my side, who with her fair tresses dries her tears. This, my beauteous birth, gazing on herself in the clear fountain, brought her forth, who is more distant. His sighs held love a little back. Then with eyes softened, that before were wild, he greeted the disconsolate kinswomen. And having grasped one and the other dart, he cried, Uplift your necks, behold the arms which I have chosen, rusted ye see them by disuse. Generosity and temperance, and the others born of our blood, go their way begging, whereat, if this be loss, let the eyes weep and the mouth wail of men whom it concerns, who have come under the rays of such a heaven. Not we, who are of the eternal rock, for though we now be thrust at, we shall endure, and folk will come again who shall make this dart abide in brightness. And I who mark, in divine discourse, comfort and dole bestowed upon such lofty exiles, count as my glory the banishment wreaked on me. And if judgment and force of destiny will have the world convert white flowers into dark, falling amongst the good is yet worthy praise. But because the fair signal of my eyes is reft by distance from my sight, which has set me in flame, light should i count that which is heavy on me but this flame has already so consumed my bone and flesh that death has put his key unto my breast for which if i had fault many a moon has the sun revolved since it was quenched if a fault dies because a man repents tornata ode on thy weeds let no man set his hand to look on that which a fair woman hides let the uncovered parts suffice, 
the sweet apple do all folk deny for which each one extends his hand but if it chance that ever thou find one a friend of virtue who should pray thee for it make thyself of fresh hues and reveal to him the flower that beauteous without wakes longing in amorous hearts end of section thirty